Hi there, I'm Teresa Scanlon, Miss America 2011, and I'd like to show you how to get this Miss America look with your makeup. Hi there, everyone. I'm Teresa Scanlon, Miss America 2011, and I have gotten a lot of requests to do a makeup tutorial about doing Miss America makeup. So the makeup that I'm going to demonstrate right now is probably a little heavier than your day-to-day -day wear. It's more toward for appearances, competitions, um, photo shoots, things like that. But it will kind of give you an idea of the makeup that I do almost all of the time for various events and appearances and how that works. Now, the first thing is the cosmetics that I'll primarily be using are called the Perfect Face Cosmetics. Um, they are a company in Houston, Texas. I originally found out about them when I was Miss Nebraska, and I went down to Houston and got makeup lessons there. So if anyone wants personalized makeup lessons, they do an incredible job. They taught me how to do my makeup for Miss America, and I get most of my cosmetics from them. They're cosmetics specifically formulated for stage, pageantry, photography, all of that, and so they're really high quality and a little bit different than just your daily makeup. But feel free to experiment with different things and you can always substitute different products, but this is just what I primarily use. So to get started, many people underestimate the importance of priming and that is extremely important because doing makeup is like painting a canvas and you want to make sure your canvas is as perfect as it can possibly be. So washing your face very thoroughly, exfoliating is all very important, but then also using the primer. So the Perfect Face has a face canvas face primer and that is what I use. Um, and if you just put that all over your, your face to smooth it out, then it will get it all ready to put makeup on. Okay, next comes foundation. I actually do the foundation before your eye makeup. Some people do it the other way, but I'll show you why I end up doing it this way. So first of all, I have a cream foundation. It's not liquid, it's not powder, it's a cream foundation. So basically it's the consistency of concealer, and this is a lot heavier foundation, so it's a lot more coverage, which is fantastic. So you're going to put that all over your face. Okay, now I apply foundation with a brush, but you can use a sponge, and some people use their fingertips for less coverage, um, but this is for maximum coverage, is to use the brush. Now, as you see, I did that all over my entire face. You wanna go heavier on any blemishes, pimples, those kinds of things. You can just put more on there. This require this actually makes it so that you don't have to use foundation and concealer. The foundation is the concealer as well. Now, at this point, you definitely want to make sure all of your hairline and your jawline is blended very, very well. So you really want to pull it down and make sure that all of that is very blended. Now, this is something that a lot of people don't do, but it makes a big difference. You're going to put foundation on your eyelids as well. So you're gonna cover your entire face, including your eyelids. Now since my face is very sticky at this point, this is where you end up using the powder and that will set your foundation and also give you some good coverage as well. So you're going to um, use the shade of powder that is your match. And again, this is uh, the Perfect Face Loose Powder. And we're going to start with our eyelids. So this is incredibly important Putting the cream foundation on your eyelids and the powder foundation to set it really smooths everything out. So before we put the powder on, you just want to make sure that every single crease is buffed out and that it's very, very smooth. Because once we put the setting powder on, it'll just permanently set any creases or wrinkles that you put in there with the foundation. Now we do what I call warrior paint, which is the Perfect Face's lightest powder. And uh, basically this is going to be your highlighting powder. See, many people struggle with the under eye area and they don't give it enough attention. It's probably where I put the majority of my focus when I'm doing my makeup is to get rid of under eye circles and all of that. Um, it may not look in this lighting, because <laughs> this is actually good lighting, um, that there are circles, but I have really bad under eye circles and so it's something I really wanna focus on. So we call this our warrior paint. And you're going to take the light highlighter powder uh, with a loose brush and make a triangle under your eyes.
Okay, you're going to put it on extremely, extremely thick. Don't worry, it's not gonna stay like this. Now you're going to add one stripe down the center of your nose. It's very important that this is straight um, and that is going to really help us contour and shape the nose. All right, now that we have the highlighter powder set, this accomplishes a couple different purposes. Um, first of all, this under eye area, people totally underestimate how important this is. It's really going to help bring out your eyes and highlight this area that's often very dark, but also it does something else. As we move to our eyes, it's going to catch any eye shadow that I drop, and then when I brush it off at the end, it takes care of all of that, because a lot of times we'll be doing eye shadow and it falls down there, and then when we try to brush it away, it ends up making dark marks and streaks and everything else underneath our eyes and then it ruins our entire face of makeup. So this will really help with that. Now what we're going to do next is take the darker regular foundation powder and set the rest of the cream foundation so none of it should be sticky anymore because at this point your entire face is very sticky with the cream foundation so we're going to put the powder on top. To make sure that you've used enough powder, you basically just do a touch test and there should be no more sticky points. Everything should be very matte and very smooth. So once you've done that, you make basically make sure that you've completely covered the area with the powder. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna come down the sides of the nose also with that foundation powder. So what we've also done is we have thinned out that center highlighting stripe and come down the sides to make it very straight and pretty thin just to, down the center of your nose. Next what we're going to do is we're going to take a contour powder. So I use the Perfect Faces Medium Contour Powder and we're going to use that brush and bring the contour powder also down the sides of your nose. For myself, I think I have a little bit of a big nose, so I make it smaller with the contour powder. Um, it really makes a difference when you highlight and contour your nose. It can totally change how your features look. And so if you want more sharp, defined features, this is one way to do it. All right, once we've done the contour on the nose, the entire face is set with powder. We're ready to move on to eyes. So eyeshadow is going to be first. And basically what I do is first have three colors of eyeshadow, a light highlighter eyeshadow, a medium neutral like a brown, and then a darker contour color. So I will be using a light, a kind of coffee brown, and then a darker espresso. Now what you're going to do with the light color is you're going to create a triangle right on the inside of your eye. The inside third of your eye is going to be a triangle of the lightest eyeshadow color. Once you've created that triangle right on the inside of your eye, you're also going to bring it right underneath the brow bone to highlight that. Now we move on to the medium color. And what you're gonna do with the medium color is make a rectangle right in the middle third of your eye. So right next to this triangle, there's going to be a medium rectangle right in the center. Once you've created that rectangle down the center, now we're going to use the darkest eyeshadow color and make a triangle on the outer third of the eye. So we now have three sections across the eye, the inside highlight, the medium color, and then the dark on the outside corner. All right, once you have created that darker triangle on the outside corner, we're ready to start blending. So what I do is use the medium color to blend both the light and medium together and then the medium and dark together just a little bit. Once it's blended across so it transitions pretty easily from light to dark, we're then going to flip the brush, the eyeshadow brush, to the pointed contour side. We're going to use the darkest color to further contour the eye. So what I do there is I take that darkest color and take it from the corner here and bring it in a little bit just to contour that crease right there. And this is where it's entirely up to you how much you do. Say if I'm getting ready for a night event, I'll probably further use black eyeshadow and use that to contour that area. Um, if it's earlier in the day or something where I want lighter makeup, I won't quite use as much of the dark shades. 
After that's done, you're just going to blend it around just a little bit to make sure that everything runs together smoothly. Now that the eyeshadow is done, I go to the eyebrow. Um, I use an eyebrow pencil and what I'm going to do is use short brush strokes to make it as natural as possible, like your natural eyebrows. Um, you can of course go as dark or as light as you want. I typically like my eyebrows just a little bit darker. And then you're going to shape these to the shape that you desire. I like a little bit more arch and then straight down. Um, so that's what I typically do for the shape of my eyebrows. It totally depends on your face and your eyebrow shape how you want to do that. Now we're going to move on to eyeliner. I like to use a gel eyeliner rather than a liquid or a pencil. It's easiest to navigate for me, and I think it also stays the best and is darkest and brightest. Um, so I use Blackout from The Perfect Face and use an eyeliner brush. And what we're going to do is take that across the top lid, pretty thin line inside to a thicker line outside, um, and then underneath, I just do my waterline. And so that's the inside of your eyelid. It's not underneath the lash line, but it's right inside your waterline. And I also do my waterline on the upper lashes as well. Once again, this is as dark or as light as you want to be. So some people choose to do eyeliner only on the top. Sometimes you don't do your waterline so that it's a little bit lighter. It's up to you. Next, I go on to mascara, and there are a lot of great drugstore brands that make fantastic mascara. So one of my favorites is CoverGirl, CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume, absolutely fantastic. Um, also, I really, really like Maybelline Falsies Volume Express. It's a great one. I actually layer different mascaras. So I use one for more of the volume, one for more of the thickness, one for length. You can certainly layer two or three different mascaras to get the desired effect. Now, I only did one eye for a reason, and that is so that you can actually see the difference that each of these things make. Um, I think there's a real contrast, obviously, with the kind of looks that you're going for, how much eyeshadow you're going to do, how dark your eyebrows are going to be, eyeliner, mascara, all of those things depend. But now you can see the real difference that this kind of makeup makes. And now I'll do my other eye. All right, once your eyes are done, we are ready to buff off all of the highlighter powder. So what you're going to do is take a pretty loose brush and just lightly brush away the highlighter powder down your nose as well as under your eyes. All right, once you've buffed all of that away, the highlighter powder right here actually already kind of creates a little bit of a contour along your cheekbones, but I like to make that even more pronounced. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a brush and take my contour powder and basically bring that underneath my cheekbone. So this is not blush, so it's a little bit different. What you're gonna do is you're gonna draw the jawline that you want right about here. Um, always brushing out so that you don't get it really heavy down near your lips. But you're gonna make the line that you want to really make that jawline pronounced. What I'm also going to do is take that contour along the sides of my face to thin out my face a little bit. Next, we're going to go to blush. Now blush, you're going to do basically the line right above the contour. So this is actually on that cheekbone and you're going to bring it down to the apples of your cheeks. Again, blush can be as light or as heavy as you want and the shade entirely depends on your face and your features and what you're going for.
All right, now we're ready for lips. So you can use whatever shade of lip liner, lipstick, and lip gloss you want. I typically like more berry tones, a little bit deeper, a little more brown um, because of my skin tone, but it can certainly be anything you'd like. Now with lip liner, what I like to do is actually make, especially my top lip, just a little bit bigger than it actually is. You don't want to go out of the lines much, obviously, but you can create the shape of lips that you want and it actually looks really good. Um, so for myself, since my top lips aren't really that rounded, I do that with the lip liner and lipstick. A lot of people only line their lips and then just leave it there and put lipstick on. What I like to do is actually bring the lip liner all the way all over my lips because that actually helps make them look a lot more even. You don't want to just leave lip liner on the outside because that often ends up where later maybe your lipstick rubs off a little bit and you can see those lines, which is never good. So I like to cover the entire lip with the lip liner and then go ahead and put lipstick on top. Now, if you want to use lip gloss, the best thing to do is to put just a dab on the bottom lip and on the top lip, right in the center. That really helps accentuate your lips and actually makes them look fuller rather than putting lip gloss over your entire lips. Uh, what I like to do to also set my lipstick is to use uh, the Perfect Faces Lip Lock which is a lip sealer. Once you put it on your lipstick, you let it dry for a couple seconds and then it makes sure that it's not rubbing off during the day or say during a competition. All right, and that is basically everything. Of course, you can always go back and make things darker or lighter, buff some things out. Some people like to add false eyelashes. I do that for competitions, but not for day-to-day -day wear. Um, if you see something that needs to be fixed, you can go ahead and make touch-ups. For those of you who don't know, I actually wear wigs, so I just pop one of these babies on and I'm ready to go. I hope this helps a little bit showing you how I do makeup to get that Miss America look. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot them my way to info at Thanks so much.